Hi, good evening everybody. This is uh, Suspect Sky. Uh, quite some time ago, on October 21st, 2015, I did a video entitled Alien Megastructures? Question uh, mark. Rare Type 3 Civilizations and Scientific Assumptions. Uh, and in this video, we discussed uh, Kepler Telescope's discovery of a very bizarre star known as Tabby Star uh, that was exhibiting uh, very unusual and bizarre fluctuations in the emitted light that we were able to detect from it. Just this week, an article was released on Science Alert entitled, That Alien Megastructure Star Just Kicked Into Action Again and Scientists Are Freaking Out. And they certainly are. So here's one of the astronomers involved uh, on Twitter. He says, this is not a drill. Point your telescopes. Uh, get some spectral data information. Get some spectral data, please, quickly. And uh, so what happened is the star started dimming again. Um, and this is a very, very, very interesting star. They call it the, uh, the strangest star in the universe. It's about 1,500 light years away. It's between uh, the Cygnus and Lyra constellations in the Milky Way galaxy. And so here they discuss that dips in brightness are usually very slight, whereas Tabby star, uh, as it's known, is uh, very, very significant dips in light, up to 22% reduction in light. Put that into perspective, a Jupiter-sized planet, which is about as big as you can get, according to our understanding of the universe, a Jupiter-sized planet would only block 1% of a star's emitted light uh, from the observing point, assuming you were in the relative, um, you, you were in the proper relative orbits that, that it was blocking the sun. So to get a 22% dip is, is enormous, and, and scientists have no real understanding of, of what this could be, and, and this is just really fascinating. So here's some information here. Yeah, you can see how, how far it's been dipping down. Here's another article. Uh, scientists cannot explain what this huge object is that is blocking the light from this distant star. And yeah, you know, I've, I've been following this for quite some time. Uh, it's not every day that they throw out uh, aliens question mark so scientists are very very hesitant to throw out um, but they're actually uh, they're actually doing it this time and so here yeah so they, they start to talk about the the most plausible and simplest explanation is that the star has a ton of space junk around it a star that is so large and it's capable of blocking up to 22 percent of the emitted light the problem with that, though, is that uh, the star is actually quite mature, and you usually only see those planetary uh, debris fields in young uh, solar systems. So a lot of scientists are saying that can't really explain it. The other one is that um, there's a huge mass of comets uh, that is surrounding the star, but, but a lot of scientists are saying there's no way comets, no matter how many you have, are going to block almost a quarter of all the light emitted from a star. Uh, so that's, you know, there, there's a serious uh, hurdle to get over. Um, you know, when, you, when you're thinking about 25 times the mass of Jupiter in comets, uh, that, that's a big hurdle to get over. And, uh, you know, I'm not the only one to think that. Uh, oh, sorry, here's, a, uh, here's an image of the, of the variability of light. Um, but no, I'm, I'm not the only one to think that. And, uh, so here's an article published uh, in late 2015 after they first discovered Tabby Star and its unusual variability. Uh, this article, and again, I'll include all the links to this in the description. Um, this article essentially says it's uh, statistically improbable that this solar system has enough debris and enough comet material uh, to block 22% of the sun. Uh, so this will be an interesting article for you, for you to check out. One, one thing I, I might want to point out here is uh, this Forbes article, no, astronomers probably haven't found alien megastructures. Uh, this is the kind of reporting that, that bothers me, and I just wanted to point this out, that, you know, you read this title, uh, we don't know what we found. Uh, and there's only been a couple scientists uh, supporting the comet theory the planetary or the planetary debris theory. Uh, the majority, the vast majority of scientists are saying, we have no idea. Uh, it could be aliens, it could not be, we, we just don't know. And uh, so this kind of reporting to me is uh, irresponsible. And uh, so here's this concept of the Dyson Sphere, uh, a collector ring. 
Oh, so yeah, and then here's also this this beacon concept. No, it's not a beacon. Um, a beacon would imply that there is uh, some some periodicity uh, involved with it. Um, so far to date, the dimming of the star has no repeatable pattern, which uh, also tends to go against either the planetary debris or the comet hypothesis, because you would expect some repeatability uh, involved with orbiting um, masses of planetary bodies uh, around a star. But the Dyson sphere, and in a number of articles I've seen this incorrectly referred to as a Dyson swarm, and I might just want to point out that uh, the difference between a sphere and a swarm is that a Dyson sphere encap encapsulates a single star. It is a, it is a structure, an alien megastructure built around an entire star uh, to capture all of the star's solar energy. The concept is that a type two, type three, uh, type four civilizations might build these structures uh, for energy production purposes. And uh, this was predicted, I think about a hundred years ago uh, by a physicist named Kardashev who came up with the type one, two, three, uh, type one, two, and three scales. I've further extended his theory to include a type four and a type five. And uh, Actually, a uh, type 5 civilization is actually going to be the topic of uh, my upcoming appearance at the next Observing the Frontier conference. But a Dyson sphere encap encapsulates a single star. A Dyson swarm is a concept that a type 3 or a type 4 civilization would be capable of building many Dyson spheres for their local galactic region. Um, so it's just more Dyson spheres built by a single civilization. So yeah, there's tons of articles on this. Uh, it's either a swarm of comets, uh, it's our galaxy's strangest star, uh, you like this, uh, WTF, um, are space aliens behind the most mysterious star in the universe. It's just a really interesting story. I wanted to bring it to the attention of our, uh, of our community. What's another interesting thing is uh, NASA's next great telescope will settle this alien megastructure mystery for good. Uh, this is referring to the James Webb Space Telescope uh, that will launch, I believe, in a year or two. Uh, another interesting thing about the James Webb Telescope is that it's going to have the uh, capability of, of detecting atmospheric information from exoplanets. Uh, so we're going to be able to tell what the atmospheres of some of these exo exoplanets that we've been detecting, what they're actually made of, and are there organic signatures or signs of life in these atmospheres uh, of these exoplanets. Uh, so here, here's an interesting um, video you might want to watch. Uh, should we build a Dyson Sphere, Space Time, PBS, Digital Studios? The, the answer is yes. Uh, so according to Kardashev, the physicist who came up with this scale of civilizations, a, a, a Type 1 civilization is a civilization that has the capability of extracting all the resources of its host planet. So this would be comparable to if humanity was mining the oceans, taking advantage of nearly all the wind energy used on our planet. Um, we're currently at type zero, uh, but most scientists think that we're going to reach a type one civilization sometime in the next two to three hundred years. A, uh, a type two civilization would be a civilization capable of building a Dyson sphere. And a type two civilization is defined as we're going to take advantage of all the energy of our host solar, or our host star. Uh, so what they're going to do is they're going to build a sphere around the star to harness all the energy uh, produced by their by their host star. A, um, a type 3 takes advantage of all the energy in their galaxy. Uh, so this would be akin to the concept of Dyson swarms, uh, civilizations building many, many, many Dyson spheres. And, and of course, you know, we're, we're talking on cosmological timescales here, several million years for civilizations to reach a type 3 status. A type 4 is a concept I've come up with uh, which just extends the type 3 idea um, from their own host galaxy to all surrounding galaxies in their local region. An interesting example of evidence of a type 4 is the Boots Void. So the Boots Void is a patch in space that there's simply nothing. Um, what's really fat, I mean, you see how populated the region around it is. Uh, it, it is conceivable that a type four civilization, a civilization upwards of a billion years old, 
would build many, many Dyson swarms around their neighboring galaxies, which would dim the light uh, found in this region sufficiently enough to produce such a very odd uh, picture. This is a real picture from the Hubble Space Telescope. So this, this to me, is evidence of, of possibly a Type 4 civilization at work. Uh, a Type 5, uh, we'll get into later. Um, that's a very advanced concept. But essentially, imagine what a civilization billions of years old, how would they appear to a civilization that's only tens of thousands of years old? Um, to quote the great Arthur C. Clarke, uh, any sufficiently advanced technology uh, is would appear to us as magic. Um, so yeah, so type four, that's some good evidence there of a Dyson swarm. But yeah, so this this is an ongoing mystery, this this tabby star. Um, it might be evidence of what we what I refer to as a modified Dyson sphere. Let me find it here. A modified Dyson sphere, and uh, it's important to remember that a a typical Dyson sphere, an actual shell around the entire star, would dim the star sufficiently enough uh, that you wouldn't see variability. It would just appear a dim star. Uh, compare that to Boots Void uh, might be a number of regular Dyson spheres built around a, uh, several, ga several galaxies around uh, your, your local cluster there. A modified Dyson sphere, also referred to as a rotary Dyson sphere, uh, would have greater variability uh, in terms of its uh, luminosity as appeared from Earth. And as Earth and our galaxy uh, and our solar system orbited around and rotated around the Milky Way galaxy, uh, as Tabby Star and its modified Dyson Sphere orbited around uh, the galaxy, we would see uh, great um, uh, shifts in variability of the star. Uh, so as one of these rings face the Earth during the time of observation, we might see a 22% reduction in the, in the star's luminosity. Yeah, just really fascinating story. It's a pretty hot one right now. Uh, it's just started dimming um, this May. And uh, yeah, keep, keep on this one. Uh, I definitely encourage the audience to uh, look into some of these uh, links that I'm going to include, particularly some of the articles uh, discussing uh, scientists where they're discussing the unlikelihood of some of the comets uh, and the planetary debris field theories. And uh, basically, we don't know what it is, um, but in my experience, uh, and I've been watching these kind of things for quite some time, uh, this is the first time many scientists uh, are openly considering uh, an alien, uh, evidence of aliens, and particularly interesting mega megastructures, which have been predicted to be produced by type 2 uh, and above civilizations uh, for over 100 years. Um, so this is an exciting topic, and uh, thank you for your time.